Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, Center for Emerging Technologies, with Rare Gem Productions, changing the way you view new ventures, including you on the pathway to success with your business in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Welcome back to Entrepreneurially Thinking. Our goal is to excite your entrepreneurial mindset and create pathways for business success in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. I'm Christy Maxfield. And I'm Dr. Cheryl Watkins-Moore, the Director for Bioscience Inclusion Initiative with BioSDL. Hey, Christy girl. How are you? I am good. It's been a fun fun day to start off with already. <laughs> we record on Tuesdays, so it's been a sunny, bright Tuesday so far. And we oh. are well into our sixth yes, season. Yes, yay. With fresh interviews, awesome episodes, and a terrific lineup of guests. Yeah. Uh, and we're making more of an impact because we're able to grow with your support. So we want to thank our founding yes. sponsors, BioSTL and CET, Shout for the renewed and continued support. We just finished our second Ignite program, our Square One Ignite program. Yeah. And I know that we've got the Vision Conference is all in the planning stages already, even mm-hmm. though it's not till October. We've yep. got lots of movement and activities. So good things coming from our sponsors. Check them out. Make sure and you support their work. You guys are listening. We love you. Yes. And so thank you. we want you to share the love mm-hmm. and send Send it out to your friends. Ask your friends to subscribe. Give a shout out to your favorite guests. Become a partner. Become a season sponsor. All Find us that. on iTunes, Spreaker, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, maybe soon Instagram if our guests have their way before, <laughs> before the end of this. Um, so we, we just want to make sure that you're finding us wherever you find your favorite podcast yep. and subscribing. Wherever you are, we want to be. Mm-hmm. So media usage, also called media consumption or media diet, which I like that, is defined as the sum of information and entertainment media taken in by an individual or group. We consume media everywhere we go, on our TVs, our phones, our computers, everywhere. According to a recent survey, the average American spent, this is wild, 721 minutes, 21, where did the one come from? Well, you know, they're precise. <laughs> per day with media as of, and this is as of September in 2017. I know it's gone up. Um, St. Louis-based nonprofit Continuity released a statistic that found less than 2% of media production agencies had a person of color working for them. So that means we're spending 720 of those 721 minutes consuming media that wasn't produced by people exactly. of color. But we are consuming it, right? People of color are consuming it. So who's <clears throat> behind all this media we consume and what inevitably does it look like? Unfortunately, we know from these statistics, not very diverse. Nope. When we come back, we'll be speaking with two innovators who have a vision to not only disrupt storytelling in St. Louis, but also around the world. I'm loving it. The founders of Creo Agency are with us today, and they are on a mission to empower and inspire the next generation of urban creatives. So, as we always say, stay listening. CET, the Center for Emerging Technologies, is a proud founding sponsor of this Entrepreneurially Thinking podcast. We want you to know all about the great things they are up to. Square One offers two training options. Square One Ignite, a four-week program created to help founders quickstart their business model validation process. Or Square One Bootcamp, an in-depth 10-week, 50-hour program that combines formal instruction with hands-on learning, networking, and mentoring. To learn more about Square One Boot Camp or Square One Ignite, visit CETSTL.com. And for your renewed and continuing support, CET, we say thank you. My name is Darren Jackson. I am a St. Louis native. I am with Creo and Wakanda. Entrepreneurial thinking to me is thinking in a way that makes people's lives easier, solves real problems. So joining us today are Darren Jackson and John Alexander, founders of Creo Agency. Darren is a visionary executive producer, and John is chief creative. Creo Agency wants to work with minority and underrepresented creatives to tell stories through their lens and create experiences that speak their language. You know we're all about that. I am loving it. 
And they are a collection of creative directors, journalists, filmmakers, photojournalists, designers, social engineers, which we wow. need to learn more about, yeah. influencers and makers. So really, what, however you self-identify, there's probably mm-hmm. a role for you in this group. And they're here to disrupt, as Cheryl said, storytelling in St. Louis and around the world. So John and Darren, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah, thank Super you. Super glad to be here. Cool. Yes. So let's start. John, what's a chief creative? <laughs> Tell me what it is. Right. Chief creative. Break so, it down for me. So chief creative, uh, that's that's the uh, the one over the creative vision. Okay. Um, you know, they're kind of like, kind of like they, they do their own thing. They have their own creative But you got to um, have something gifts. rolling up to the top. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like we said, we have a collective of creatives. So, you know, I kind of like, kind of like help round them up and kind of guide them in, mm-hmm. into our vision and, you know, creating content that we want to put out. I was going to say hurting the cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I haven't heard cats before, but okay. Like your, cats. <laughs> like your dogs, hurting your dogs. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go Whichever with that. animal you'd like to herd. <laughs> I like giraffes. There so. we go. There you yeah. go. Okay. There you go. Awesome. You <laughs> and that begs the question then, what is an executive producer and for you? I am still identifying that role for myself, I okay. believe. Um no, we my my main job is just to bring the ideas to life and to really oversee like the partnerships um, and the strategy to like bring these ideas to life. So where John is overseeing these, this incredible, all these creative ideas, my goal is to figure out how to make those ideas, which ones that we can actually bring to life. And then the ones that we can't like, where do those go so that they don't die in a graveyard? Cause all the content is valuable to us. Absolutely. So Creo agency. I am dying to know what, how, how did y'all come up? I think that's such a cool name. Uh, you know, how did y'all come up with that? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll let Darren take that one. Well, initially I had a lot of Uh-oh. other bad Ew. ideas. <laughs> it takes a lot. We always say you got to throw out a lot of the ideas before you get to yeah. the good one, right? Yeah. Well, I so yeah, so I don't know. I kind of like the other names more, but they told me no. And I was just like, cool. You know, I'm a dad now, so my idea, my my like names and creativity has gone all the way down. I just try and focus. <laughs> you were um, gonna build a two year old <laughs> name the company, weren't you? Yeah, exactly. So I did. It was his first word it was Creo, so we just <laughs> tried to say crown. No, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like it. Revisionist history. <laughs> So we uh, so Creo means to create. So um, we knew that what we wanted to do was to be known as creators. Um, mm-hmm. And like so, a lot of times, as you see creatives of color in these spaces, mm-hmm. they're not the they're not the creators. They're not known as the creators. Um, they don't have the freedom to create from their own ideas. Mm-hmm. The people who are working in there, it's like, hey, can you hold this camera while, mm-hmm. while you shoot my ideas, right. for instance? Mm-hmm. And so, like, we really wanted to create this culture of not only. Um, diverse a diverse community of creatives but we also wanted to really push them like our mission is to keep pushing them to create more so that's phenomenal i I was just amazed by just the the statistic how people of color are not represented in these in the in the creative space and i think you know people of color are very creative in different aspects you know so um what drew you guys to forming this this agency uh, it just. Where it, were you working before? Uh, I mean, uh, so so before before we met, I was a uh, freelancer full time, um, and I was <clears throat> I was working with just like a bunch of random different clients. Um, I worked with Vest Soda. We did a, a super dope campaign last year, a docu series. Uh, so I was just kind of like doing different things, uh, and then we met and we formed Creo, and you know we kind of took off from there. And uh, to answer your other question. Um, it was just us wanted to create a space for people of color to create. Cause like you mm-hmm. said, people of color are very creative. Like mm-hmm. we know, we know so many people together that are just like super like right. raw talent, like just like super dope with everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just don't necessarily have the platforms or they don't necessarily have to uh, know how to get to that space. Mm-hmm. So, uh, fortunately for us, we've been through, you know, the trenches and learning different business techniques and dealing with like different brands and everything like that, mm-hmm. where we're in a position where we can get our creative ideas out and we know how to do it and we also know this pool of like super dope people and we can help bring them along as well that's cool so you really made a strategic decision Mm -hmm. rather than trying to infiltrate other agencies and add the number of creatives within the existing structure Mm -hmm. to say in fact you don't get to have that talent we're going to aggregate that talent over here and we're going to do work 
as competitors. Yeah. No, we, very much intentionally hmm. and very much competitive on purpose. <laughs> I like but it. Like, but in a, way, in a way that's very friendly to our competitors, like we have great relationships with these other agencies. But the reality is, is that um, there's still, even if we were to infiltrate and do it, that's not my mission. Right. My mission isn't to rebuild your business right. unless you give me equity and then I can, ha- and then I can help you. Amen. Spoken like and a so true like, <laughs> businessman. So right? like, <laughs> that's not my job. My job isn't to mm-hmm. go into culture, infiltrate it and do that. And we've been mm-hmm. doing that for too long right. or expected to do that for too long. And so for us, I mean, we could be, either one of us could be anywhere with the things that we've done. Right. But like, we want to create this platform so that like our community and the next generation of creatives who are coming out this Gen Zers, mm-hmm. um, that they have a space that they feel like they belong to. I think that's, that's such a cool point that you, uh, that you said, um, you guys would be great partners for agencies that are not in the community that mm-hmm. don't understand, mm-hmm. you know, the language, the the market, uh, so to speak. So how is that? How is that working for you guys? Uh, are you reaching out to these other agencies as partners and how do they see you? I think it's disruption, but yeah, I'll let you no, guys answer. Yeah. I would say we definitely uh how do you say it? ruffle feathers? <laughs> <laughs> we ruffle people's the feathers. Sure, yeah. um, if you haven't pissed a few people off, you're not doing it. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. And yeah. and exactly. I don't and I don't feel like we've pissed them off enough yet. Like because we haven't even oh, they haven't seen they haven't yet. even seen the projects <laughs> that we're like actually working on. Yeah. And so like for me, I just feel like those relationships are really really key and essential mm-hmm. to making sure. Um, that that people understand because already agencies that we talk I'm not going to name them right. but already agencies that we've talked yeah, to we don't about want you this to screw up your yeah partner. exactly <laughs> right <laughs> but like already these agencies that like we've talked to like I we've gotten asked to go work for different agencies mm-hmm. and literally walked in and was the only person of color mm-hmm. in that space and I made it known to the agencies that that I walked into is like, I don't want to work in another space where I'm the only person of co- right. color. And like, um, and so, so to me, it's like for them, I see the value like of our relationship, but I see what we add to them. Absolutely. And I'm not, and like for me, so like, I don't, we're not asking them for very much of anything. Like we have to You're adding to them. Yeah. We're like, so we're telling, I feel like what we added to them was we told them is like, you need to have more creatives of color. You need to have more women mm-hmm. hired. On- this should not just look like a frat house. Mm-hmm. Like this should not just look like a group of white guys mm-hmm. with their, with their beards and their flannels and the glasses <laughs> and their, don't and, forget the man, but you know, like, and, it, <laughs> and it's just like, and I'm like, those are my friends. But at the same time, like right. that's not where I want to do business and real innovation comes through diversity mm-hmm. and like so they've started hiring people of color and women and I've literally seen it like we have a group uh, a group of friends that just hired they've grown and they've only hired people of color but I think you guys as partners in, in those relationships help them to grow yeah. yeah because you bring that flavor to them you know as well as pushing them to increase their numbers and, and diversity within their or- well, own organization. Well, and you also put the stake in the ground, right? So yeah. how often right. do we hear, I can't find the black fill in the oh, blank? Oh, exactly. Right. Like, oh, like my God. Somehow, I like, can't er- hire anybody. I don't know where they are. Where, <laughs> where are, are they? they? Right. Uh, and by, where okay. are you at? Right. Because <laughs> you hang out in your own silo, though. Because they there do wonder go. that. I do <laughs> think it's genuine. I don't think it's always they don't know where or they don't. They don't have people come like obviously people come in and they mm-hmm. turn people down of color all the time. But I think that there's some people who also it's just because you're not present. Right. You're not even present where real innovation is happening, but you're selling this to your clients well, as I, if you are. I always say if, if you're uh, looking in the same networks that you've always looked in, no, you won't find us. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have We're to go there. out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't live on Mars. Yeah. <laughs> We're not in like, a place like that. You right but down you, the street. Right. We're around the corner. But you got to go outside of your networks yeah. Right, yeah. to yeah. find yeah. us. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. for sure. Very cool. So. so as you guys look at innovation within this space, what does it mean to have your voices collected and then mm-hmm. amplified in a, in an agency that is designed for, by, and with people of color, it mean it means a lot. Like for me personally, uh, just being able to tell stories that I want to tell and have mm-hmm. have eyes on them and have people relate to them, and like these are stories that aren't necessarily seen uh, every day. Mm-hmm. Just just to be able to like build that platform and do that is just 
like mind blowing because we don't see stories like this every day. And then we get younger, younger kids that see us doing this and see, see these stories that are being put out and then they feel empowered like, oh, I can do this too. And that's what it's really all about is just empowering everybody and, and making them feel like you don't have to go here mm-hmm. to like, to like, to like be part of this. You can start right. this up yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, that's one of the big, the major parts about this. So what type of work <clears throat> are you guys producing? Is it video? Is it marketing collateral print? Is it ads? What are you guys doing? So currently we're doing a few different things. So we're doing sponsor content. So people are paying us currently to create content, our own content that they could put their branding behind. Mm. Um, so we're doing that type of content work. What does that mean? So I, without, without, I've signed an NDA on, yeah. all, on these. Just projects. tell us generally what does that. So for somebody sitting out there who doesn't know what the heck you're talking. Oh, about. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So, so basically, um, one of the projects that we're working on is like a docu series, a new mm-hmm. docu series, um, and and so a company has who wants their brand to be connected with the communities yep. that we're reaching, mm-hmm. um, and the, and they want to be a part of the stories that we're telling. They'll pay us. Um, and and then for for instance, like on a retainer basis, right. to just keep on putting out content that they can use to to connect to the communities. So that you guys are doing the interviews. You're going out to find the people. Exactly. You're doing. We have complete creative control. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. And then and then we have um. So those are those type of specific projects. Mm-hmm. Then we have um projects that we're working on, um like. Sh- films literally mm-hmm. uh so john will be releasing a, one another uh one dealing around centered around mental health uh oh. mental health and as you see like in a, the community mental health and in in the black community in the black yeah. community. in the hood yeah. specifically yes. yeah. and so like and i mean it's, it's an incredible story yeah. like you see this kid like from the hood who's like in this breaking moment in his life and he has to make a decision and you kind of see this yep. process of like all the stuff that they're going through mm-hmm. so anyway so working on projects like this that end up getting sponsored as well okay. um and being able to do those projects um and then we're we have account we have clients like nature's bakery is one of our biggest accounts they yeah. do the fig bars mm-hmm. um and that's literally all creative consulting so people have started bringing us in um just because of some of the past campaign work that we've done um to hire us to kind of really look at 300 they have 300 employees at nature's bakery locally they're uh-huh. they're nationwide but they have 300 locally and 90 percent of them are african-american young african-americans um and so but they want to continue to bring more and more in um, and hire more and more. Uh, so, are people. you guys doing the marketing or branding for them? We're literally They're without doing the consulting. Without yeah, wow. without without crossing any boundaries. We're we're uh, working with them on strategies on how to Engage. bring in people and keep them hired. That's amazing. And move up. Yeah. So you guys are not just the creatives on that. That's I love that. I yeah, mean, it's, yeah, it's creative. It's yeah. it's it's literally it's strategic. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, there's the creative of doing, and then there's the yeah. creative of envisioning. But so there's some both. film production stuff that will go in on this. There's a lot of stuff that's going to go in on like this. It's almost like you guys are doing HR for them too. Yeah, well, we're working directly with their HR. Oh, okay. Sometimes like, it feels like very different. Well, the yeah. innovation there is that yeah. wow, people are realizing that all of these things are interconnected, right? Yes, your brand is. Is part and parcel of your ability to hire and retain. Yeah, great yeah so I mean, like, part of creative directing isn't just putting together pretty colors or, right. or the, right? Like, some of creative direction is just like, hey, we have an, a group of executives and we need somebody who can relate to us, but that's also creative enough to think outside of the box on how to bring these ideas to you life. That's truly disrupting. Yes. Oh, no, we plan. This on is, it. I mean, from a corporate standpoint, because when you say agency and I came it's out of corporate. It's not your marketing. It is not It's not your market. marketing world. Yes. We don't do any like print work or anything that's like that. That's what I was getting. No, after. we don't do print work. I uh, love- yeah, no, we, we say st- our whole focus is on what we can create and empowering people who have brains, like that aren't being <laughs> who that, have brains that aren't being that's a, that's a starter right? <laughs> that don't that aren't being activated because people aren't welcoming them into their community. Love it, mm-hmm. and so yeah, so that's that's the direction that we're headed. It. It's yeah. yeah, that is that's very different from what I was thinking. And we're gonna come right back and continue the conversation. 
BioSTL is a proud founding sponsor of this Entrepreneurially Thinking podcast, and we want you to know all about the great things they are up to. BioSTL Fundamentals is an entrepreneur development program targeted to founders wishing to start a company in the bioscience space, including therapeutic products, diagnostic products, medical devices, animal and crop agriculture products, and research tools. Participants earn resources by achieving specific coaching goals. You can learn more about BioSTL Fundamentals by visiting BioSTL.org. And for your renewed and continuing support, BioSTL, we say thank you. My name is John Alexander with Creo Agency, and entrepreneurial thinking to me means taking control of your life, your destiny, and leaving an impact behind. So you guys are hard at work empowering people who have brains, which is totally awesome. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. don't use fancy language. Just say it like it is. And um, <laughs> and you also made the really important point that in order for young people to aspire to different careers and opportunities, they have to be able to see themselves, right? So as young people, who did you all see? You know, uh, John, you've... You've been an adjunct professor. You've worked at Nine Media. Darren, mm-hmm. you've been in music. You've been in nonprofits, social entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Who did you all see growing up that said, you know what, I, I, this is where I belong? Yeah. Mm. For me, it, so what's funny is like for me, growing up, I didn't really see a particular person like of color that I'm like, yo, I want to be this person. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's because they weren't really there. I wasn't really looking. I was always just a creative child. And like mm-hmm. my parents always let me be creative. So mm-hmm. I just always like went towards that. But like as of late, movies like Get Out, just seeing Jordan yeah, Peele, yeah. that was his directorial debut. Mm-hmm. And it did. It was huge. Mm-hmm. Um, Issa Rae with her show, how she came off of YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, most recently Black Panther like that mm. movie like I cried at the end of that movie just mm-hmm. just seeing like how big it was yes. and, like you know all the like the the main cast was black like the, a, mm-hmm. lot, a lot of the crew was black like just seeing stuff like that I felt empowered like yo mm-hmm. I can do this too mm-hmm. like all these ideas I have in my head I can make this happen as well and people are willing to see them mm-hmm. so. I think that's what's so impactful is, uh, going back to that Black Panther movie um, I know families who have taken their kids back not just once twice three times mm-hmm. because you don't get the opportunity to see an all black not just an all black cast but behind the yeah. scenes mm-hmm. that was all done and I think that was so impressive and so impactful so yeah. seeing yourself but also your yeah. parents encouraged this in you yes. which, yeah. which is a hugely important piece mm-hmm. yes. because a, a lot of times parents want us to pursue other things yeah. right my husband and yeah. I don't have children but he always mm-hmm. says you know if we did they could be whoever they wanted to be after they were an engineer cause he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like see honey that's one reason number 982 why we're not having children <laughs> right <laughs> see that that's nice uh, but so that's a hugely important piece is yeah. that it, that wasn't yeah. tamped down in you yeah. either yeah, right? right yeah yeah it was it was huge like like I, I had a really good childhood. I was outside all the time. I had mm-hmm. toys. Uh, even though we had a bunch of toys, I would play with like pin tops and pretend they were rockets or like stapler removers, act like it was a monster or something like that. See, that's that's innovation, right? Yeah, there. yeah. So because I see a stapler remover as a damn stapler remover. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> no, that was that was like the, playing with he's it. He's got a facility. <laughs> that's innovation. He's a facility. I, I like, hey, Darren, that's, that's, creative. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah. creative. That's yeah. creative. I want to see that short film. Uh, <laughs> oh man, we gonna we gonna put it on the books we awesome. can, we do that. awesome and so Darren for you what did you see that like a particular person or was it very much like John where it just you you were allowed to live into the things that came to you naturally yeah I moved so much as a kid mm-hmm. and and so I didn't really I would say like it was so weird I, I feel like my childhood went by so fast and I'm still like a child <laughs> I'll just get, and now you have a two year old <laughs> and now I, I got a money. child yeah exactly <laughs> um but I would say that, like, really what was, like, really pushed on, like, to me. So my mom's white. My dad's black. Mm-hmm. They got divorced at a young age. And my mom, like, there's all this question, like, how are you going to raise a black man in America? Mm-hmm. And, like, she's like, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have no idea. I'm a young divorced yeah, white woman. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Right. Figure it out. She's right? just like, <laughs> so, she, so she bought me, like, these black entrepreneurial magazines. And she would make, really? it was, she would read them to me like children's books. 
And before I would leave, she like the house every day, she would make me do a mantra. And I just fell in love with like business in that space anyway. Like, I think she already knew that like I was kind of in that space, like yep. thinking that way. Yep. And so she just really like played on that and like pushed me in it. And then as I grew up, I still grew up. I mean, I grew up all over, but um, still like urban influence was like my biggest thing. So like, but my influencers were people like Diddy. <laughs> like, cause I was like, cause I was like, yo, like I'm around all these rappers. I can kind of rap, you know, I can hold my own type of thing. But really what inspires me, really what I always, and what I've always wanted to do was like, um, solve problems within mm. like and specifically like help people get on like I know it sounds like super like simple but like looking at people like Diddy like Jay-Z mm. and like so for me it was like very much um, these like black entrepreneurs and then Issa Rae like oh my gosh mm-hmm. like seeing and then um, Shonda Rhimes and I'm like oh, yeah. so now I'm like seeing these like incredible yes. people even more so now that I I wasn't even aware of what parts of the industry existed. So I always felt isolated. Mm -hmm. Um, So I always felt like, oh, man, I'm not a filmmaker. Oh, man, like, Mm -hmm. I kind of rap, but I ain't that good. (laughs) (laughs) Like, uh, but like, but like, you know, and then I started finding my space as an artist and I started finding, uh, and as I went further in that and started getting more exposure, I started meeting people who were managers and producers Mm -hmm. and and people who just brought in ad agencies. And I'm like, what the hell is an ad agency? (laughs) And so like, you know, and so like, and I start seeing how all this functions and then that helped me to really find my space. Like, I think it's just following this trail of of business and solving problems to get people on. But you know, you, you, I think you said something really Im- impactful because a lot of a, a lot of times, especially with people of color, if we don't know something or we don't we shy away from it or we're like, mm, I don't want to ask questions. Or yeah. you were just the opposite. It yeah. was like, hey, let me go find out about this. Let me go find out about that. What the hell's an ad agency? Yep. That kind of thing. I think we need to teach our kids that mm-hmm. you know yeah. to always be questioning, ask questions are good. Yeah. find your path you yeah. know because everybody's path ain't to one way or the other yeah that's yeah. very cool no nah, yes yeah, amazing and you had a mom amazing. that was uh, that was she was trying that, right? she was with it <laughs> she's like I'm gonna get somewhere with him <laughs> right I think she did a good yeah. job uh, yeah, yeah, yeah she's, sure. she's dope <laughs> so as you guys are exploring all this uh, John, I need to follow you on social clearly. Darren, I do follow you on social. And I see you using social media to do a lot of personal reflection mm-hmm. um, about this journey, about your where your head and your heart are mm-hmm. in this journey. Mm-hmm. Um, how does that play into the stories you want to yes. tell, the stories that don't get told? Because... I feel like for most of my upbringing, the idea that men in general had emotional lives was probably something I wasn't really read into as a woman, yeah. right? And then as I get more immersed in in communities that I am not organically a part of... Um, yeah, you just, are, girl. You know you probably are. <laughs> like somebody about. cousin. You're related to my mama. So. Well, I am. I'm related to your mama. And, and we don't know where our paths cross. But, like, I got to spit into a we cup got- and figure out the <laughs> DNA thing, right? Um, but but uh, that, that um, I think that we, we forget that people who don't, who we don't see all the time and talk with all the time or feel like we relate to all the time, for me, men, you know, for other people, other other groups but right like that there is a depth and an emotional Mm -hmm. well there as well so is that part of the storytelling i just because like i said john i don't know what you're doing on social but darren's darren's leading us right Mm -hmm. through reflection Mm -hmm. yeah i know like part of it is and i'll let john speak to this too because that's part of his passion is like humanizing Mm. us right like (laughs) Like, like, i was like i'm just like wow men cry yeah like cool that's humanizing wow black people care about yeah exactly the blank that's cool and humanizing like so for me like i like just to speak from like my own person the reason why i reflect the way i do through social is well and it's changed recently. All of it's intentional. I know, I'm grew up in the internet, so I know how to use it, kind of thing. I'm like, I ain't letting everything out. Uh, but like, I figured, <laughs> but still. But like, yeah. But like, I like. So I like to use it as a method to. Let me let me start off by saying this. I have had experiences, exposure, and opportunities that most people will never experience in their lifetime, mm-hmm. and. And I'm like young, black, uneducated, didn't graduate college type of thing, barely graduated high school. Mm -hmm. 
and um There's and, a whole bunch of and it's a like lot that. of us out there that's right and i gotta and i have to tell that story Absolutely. for them mm-hmm. so that they get to see like that they get to feel also also on the second part is i'm an artist by nature mm-hmm. so like and like part of that marketing aspect is i know people want to feel like they grew up with you mm-hmm. people don't like overnight successes the way that they used to oh, God. and so like yeah. people like to feel so i give people that element to like grow up with me mm-hmm. and then but like last but not least like my third thing that i really focus on is being vulnerable in spaces that we're not usually that you don't see men and black mm-hmm. men or people who are killing it and certain things like you don't see them being vulnerable and how they're almost blowing it or like I wrestle with anxiety I didn't I wasn't open up about that until this year I'm all over social media about it Mm -hmm. and I didn't open up about it till till this year because I didn't know until this year Mm -hmm. I just kept on making decisions based out of it or Mm -hmm. not making decisions and it was hurting me and I had no idea that that was happening and so I wanted to I felt like just to have integrity, I needed to like share that part of the story too, that people didn't need to think that like, yo, this journey is easy, that it's right. not hard. And if it's not financial, not physical, it's mental, it's spiritual. Mm-hmm. Like there's all these other aspects that like when you're fighting on this journey, when you're actually trying to live out who you are, your purpose, your dreams and bring these ideas to life, like you're attacked in every single way. Yeah. Every Even when you're way. killing it, it might be killing you. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I and and so for me, I want to tell those stories. Yep. And I'm going to tell more of those stories. I'll, I'll tell you guys about that later. That is very but cool. but John, but John, like I think he should definitely talk on it because he's been working on that of like humanizing specifically even with mental health for black men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he's been working on that. Talk to us <clears throat> about that, John. Uh, yeah. So. <clears throat> Uh, my whole thing with with a lot of work that I want to do it deals with like humanizing and empathizing with people because mm-hmm. uh, I feel like that's where a lot of uh, a lot of stuff get lo- gets lost in translation because people don't understand why people do a certain thing why they think this way why they act this way or whatever it may be and, and I that- think in, in our social context now you have that going on because people don't empathize yeah. they yeah. don't you know and they're yeah. not listening yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly and it's like it's like you don't necessarily have to agree with everything right. but but understand why it is that way and just move accordingly yeah. so a lot of work uh, a lot of the more more recent work short film work I've been doing has been right. dabbling in mental health um, right. so kind of like the the project that he was talking about earlier there's mm-hmm. a project called cycle where um, it's a three minute three minute short about this young black guy he's riding with his friends um, something bad happens and 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 it ends at that and he has he's basically at a crossroad mm-hmm. and we're working on the follow-up to that for for, uh, mental health awareness month to see like what happens after that and then mm. in this in this um installment we'll be exploring uh him dealing with what just happened trying to process it okay. and attempting to go to therapy you know what i mean mm-hmm. and you know and, and everything that comes with that and that doesn't happen in our communities exactly. people do exactly. not think yeah. therapy is even worthwhile exactly. in fact a lot of times uh, people of color think you know you don't need to go talk to anybody you don't need to go Literally, talk to a right. therapist yeah. right yeah. Yeah. while right. they're falling apart exactly and then that's, that's changing that's, too yeah yeah, and, that, and that's, that's that's what we want to do is just kind of like make make that a human thing mm-hmm. you know an okay thing to do that's very cool yeah and oh. it's really good for our artists that mm-hmm. watch too yeah. because I worked in the industry for a while and like almost every one of those artists that I knew had like a mental breakdown I've known I've had friends in the hospital family in the hospital having well, to go even artists I'm thinking of right now a lot of our black kids in community oh in general oh, yeah need just this. dealing and, with trauma and, yeah. right and especially you know our, our young it's black boys right now yeah you know, no matter what school settings they're in, they're faced with a lot of different issues. You know, yeah. whether they be in a all urban environment or they're they're in they're in a majority environment mm-hmm. and they're the minority in that. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, you know, uh, loving to find out more about this because I think how can we get your message into some of these environments where these kids are struggling yeah and they're hurting mm. yeah. well where do people see your content now mm-hmm. so if we're if we're following that cycle story yeah. where do we follow that so um so we'll release yeah <laughs> yeah so so we um if it's on instagram i gotta figure out how to work. <laughs> <laughs> right we do have some behind the scenes stuff on instagram but no it's uh it's uh it's on youtube right now okay. uh so uh, we released it uh, back in February, so we'll probably do like a follow up release with this mm-hmm. second installment, so people can kind of catch up on the first one, uh, um, kind of like, and that, that'll probably be what helps like launch our website. So is it Creole? Well, I have we to, can't wait for that website. I cannot wait. <laughs> I know. So uh, if I were on YouTube, how the hell do I find Cycle? So 
well, I do know how to search freaking YouTube. Okay? Right now, you, right now you can look up Psycho John Alexander and you or Chelsea. We'll find it. I'll help you Google it, girl. Yeah. Um, but we'll do a. We're gonna do a relaunch of. So really, what we're gonna focus on social media wise will be mm. Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, and we'll try and drive most of what we do to YouTube. Ooh, I and so yeah, so we're gonna. So we're gonna. Um, so whenever we do like a relaunch and all that, so then you guys will be able to find everything on Creo's cool. pages. Yeah, but right now we're on a like so just with the website on it. We're in the we're in this <laughs> and we this, have already scolded them about. They've not scolded about us about our website. website it's up, cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like right now, like we were able to start. So we had the option to start off by raising capital or mm-hmm. by like going out getting some of these clients on our own, mm. and and. To fund our startup expenses, right. to fund what our actual vision is. So what we're doing right now with all these projects, we're able to fund this. We're able to fund our, ourselves and these yeah. creatives to start it's creating traffic. this content that we're going to be releasing. And our business eventually will shift. You'll see a shift in our company. We're really trying to build Creo to be a brand that represents the next generation of urban creatives. So, Love it. so, Love it. but instead of going through the capital raising route mainly because i only know white people with money <laughs> like and so instead of going that route we're just gonna go we're just working okay on if you don't want to ask them i got other things we could ask them for I so know. that's good to know I'm like well Excellent. you give i don't want to give away equity we're trying to build this for urban i hear youth. you we have <laughs> we have these like, conversations OBT, all the time already we can't that's, let them get not this. us <laughs> not creo well too. i'm just saying if you need a 44 year old white chick to do anything right. you let me know because hey, i'm i'm I know white like, people all the time. I, I've heard. <laughs> hey, I've yeah. heard. There's just a word on the street. <laughs> <laughs> But she's suspect. Uh, I don't think she's uh, I'm just saying. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. Yeah, no, we already up. established him. Mom and I go way back. <laughs> so, guys, our time. I can't. Well, I can't, I can't believe, believe it. Because any every good conversation yes. goes way too fast. But so we can look for the Creo reboot soon. Right. Um, and keep an eye on you there. Um Quickly, can you tell us a little bit about All Blacks Creative? Because that's also also something we've been keeping our our ni- our eyes on. That's for a different interview, actually. You guys should hit up okay. my wife. There we go. Awesome. Uh, Danielle Elise. So me and Danielle started uh, All Black Creatives um, in 2014. We kind of like started playing with the idea of this like um, curated community, like where we can create this space to celebrate the diversity within black and brown culture mm-hmm. and um and she there's a lot of really good story behind okay, that so we'll you should ask Danielle her on. all right yeah. absolutely that, that means we gotta put build her into the next show no yeah. problem right. i'm She's on dope. that yeah so uh twitter instagram youtube where can we find you in particular darren so you can find me at jackson which is j-x-o-n-x-i-s-h jackson times ish Excellent. So you can see me and my my life. Wonderful. And John, where are we following you at? Uh, chill season across the board. Awesome. So pretty. All uh, one word. Yeah. Chill minus season two. across the board. No, no, not across the. Board. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, 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 he it's means just, on all platforms. It's just sweetie. chill season. Chill, chill season yep, on chill all season. platforms. Yep, okay. Yep. <laughs> we don't have to Could you just? Can we hire you to do a little consulting here? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm not a millennial. I'm like the baby boomer. Uh, okay. We love the baby boomer. I'm an Xer. Hey. Proudly representing. What's up, X? I know. All right. Well, thank you guys thank for you making guys. time this while you're so like changing fun. the world yes. and blowing up creative thought and, and action here in St. Louis and, and everywhere else. Thank you for making time to be with us. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Changing the way you view new ventures, igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship. It's entrepreneurially thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit our website for show notes, resources, information about our guests, upcoming events, and of course, all your favorite episodes. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them for us in the comment sections and be sure to leave us a five star rating on iTunes. The best way to show love is to share. Let everybody know that you're thinking entrepreneurially. So visit our website, entrepreneurallythinking.com. Hashtag EthinkSTL. Entrepreneurially thinking is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.